Hello, Vinyl community, and welcome back to Mike's Vinyl Experience. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Today, a, a day that I've been excited for ever since Steely Dan Asia UHQR came out a few months ago. The latest UHQR release from Analog Productions in the Steely Dan series is Gaucho. So excited for this album. Like all Steely Dan albums, every one of them, in my opinion, I think are phenomenal. They're masterpieces. Excellent, excellent music. And really, truthfully, and this album might be the pinnacle of all of them, really well engineered, really well recorded, incredible, incredible sound on these albums that they are doing. Steely Dan Gaucho was released in 1980 on MCA Records. It took two years to record and mix and produce this incredible album, due mostly to the fact that Becker and Fagan were absolute perfectionists. Everything had to be just right. On the album, Gary Katz was the producer, Roger Nichols was the executive producer, along with executive engineer. Bob Ludwig did uh, the mastering on the album. I think that's probably along with Becker and Fagan's insisting on everything being absolutely perfect and perfectionist to the T. I think that's why it sounded so good right initially from the beginning when this album was released in 1980 is the great attention to detail from Becker and Fagan and then of course the great people they had behind it putting it all together uh, was one of the reasons why I think that it was incredibly done. The reason it took so so long, two years. Let me just kind of just tell you some of the session players that they had and to the great lengths that they went to to get these players uh, because of their, of course, obvious talent, but for the exact sound that Becker and Fagan were looking for on this album. I'm just going to quickly go through a list of some of these session players. Uh, Chuck Rainey uh, played bass guitar, Don Gronlick, uh, the electric piano. Uh, you've got Randy Brecker, and I know that there's a few Brecker brothers on here. Michael Brecker, Randy Brecker, and I think there's actually one more. I'm assuming that they're probably Walter Becker's brothers, uh, siblings, maybe cousins. I'm not sure on that. Tom Scott, tenor sax. Rob Mouncey, Rick Marotta is on drums. Jeff Picaro played drums. Hugh McCracken guitar, Victor Feldman and Steve Gadd. Now they did percussion and Steve Gadd also did drums on a few of the cuts on the album. Uh, Mark Knopfler, guitar solo. I mean, that was on Time Out of Mind. Uh, Michael Brecker, as indicated, I'm assuming that's one of his brothers, I don't know. Uh, David Sanborn, alto saxophone on Time Out of Mind. Michael McDonald, backing vocals. And as we get into the review of this album, I'll talk about the backing vocals. Oh my heavens, I've never heard them quite like I've heard them on this release, but we'll get to that here in just a minute. Uh, anyway, incredible session players that they had in the recording process of this album, which, like I indicated, they were it was important to them to get the sound that they were after, the players that could play the sound that they were after, and their impeccable uh, attention to detail and perfectionist mannerism is the reason why this album really was such a success and really why the album sounded so good right from the beginning. So right from the get-go, this album came out and released in 1980 sounding fantastic right from the start. So let's take a look and see what Analog Productions has done with this incredible album as part of the UHQR Steely Dan series that they're doing. Actually, I'm so glad that they decided to do UHQRs on this, and I'm gonna to get to that a little bit, but I'll give you a little bit of hint, and I've talked about this I don't know how many million times, but the UHQR vinyl that is being used is dead, full-on, silent vinyl. So cool. But let me tell you uh, some of the other highlights of this album. Of course, it's a 45 RPM uh, release. It's limited to 20,000 
numbered copies. It's mastered by Bernie Grunman from a 1980 analog tape copy originally EQ'd by Bob Ludwig. Pressed a quality record pressing using 200 gram clarity vinyl. That's the vinyl that I think is really, really quiet. Um, pure as possible pressing and most visually stunning presentation and packaging. And of course, as we get in and see what's in the box, we'll look at the tip on old style type jacket. But let's quickly open this up and see what we have uh, in the box. I keep the original wrapper in there as well. Okay, first we have out of the box, and we've talked about these before. Uh, Chad Kassam talks a little bit about the UHQR uh, process and has his signature here. Um, a little bit information on the UHQR, uh, the way that these are recorded and how they're done. I think it's a really neat little pamphlet that they include with the UHQR. Good information here. Of course, they put a little flyer in describing some of the albums that they have released. UHQRs along with uh, analog reel-to-reel uh, -reel type tapes. Uh, also got in here a flyer on a lot of their releases, including some of the Atlantic 75s. Uh, this is really, I think, one of the coolest things that they are doing. These liner notes uh, that Donald Fagan has done. Uh, th this is just nothing short, in my opinion, of awesome. I apologize for that. There's a picture of the master tapes that were used in this. And then of course, you have a little uh, commentary as indicated by Donald Fagan. Then on the back, you've got uh, the, uh, the names of the songs on the albums and the people that are playing on the, uh, each of the songs, which I think is really cool. Let's take a quick look before we get to the uh, album. Let's take a quick look at the uh, vinyl. As indicated, it's their Clarity Vinyl. It's clear uh, vinyl. Uh, this is side A. I hope you can see that without any glare. Uh, 200 gram vinyl uh, record. Um, excellent, excellent album. That was side two, sorry. There's only one song on there and that's Glamour Profession on that uh, side. And then here is the tip on old style gatefold album cover that comes with it. Um, as you open that up, you will see the songs along with uh, words uh, to the song and the musicians that are playing on it as well. And then of course, over here on the back, you've got side, uh, the, the songs that are on each side, there's uh, four sides, obviously, because it's 45 RPM. Uh, then, of course, there's the numbers. Mine is 001061. Uh, really, really quality. You're getting such good quality with these UH HQRs. I just can't even begin to tell you the quality that you're getting with these. So before I get into the sound quality, of Steely Dan Gaucho Analog Productions UHQR release. Let me kind of explain just really quickly what versions of the album that I have uh, that I will be comparing this album to uh, so that I can get a basis for what was originally done and what other options that I have available to me. Uh, as far as digital, I have the original uh, MCA CD version of this album. I also have the Mobile Fidelity Gold CD version of the album, as well as a 96 by 24 high res version of the album. Now, as far as those digital uh, versions of this album, Sealy Dan Gaucho, the Mobile Fidelity Gold CD is far and away better than the high resolution file or the original MCA CD uh, in my opinion, at least on my system with my Sony CDSA CD player. Uh, that gold Sony CD uh, is really, uh, that gold mobile fidelity CD is really quite good. But really, 
my go-to and what has been my go-to since the album was released was my original 1980 release of Steely Dan Gaucho MCA label. Uh, great sounding album. As we talked about at the beginning of this review, this album had a great start. It was recorded impeccable uh, perfection by Fagan and, and Becker. Uh, the recording people that were involved with it, as we have talked about, were just first rate and stellar. That's why this album sounded great right from the beginning. Great, great sounding album. However, as good as this original pressing sounds, and it sounds, in my opinion, fantastic, it pales in comparison to the analog productions version of this wonderful album. The UHQR, very similar in nature to what we talked about with Steely Dan Asia. This version of the album is absolutely I, I don't know the proper words to put, but I'll just say stunning. And I'll probably be able to put that in a little bit better words as we go through the sound on this album. I'll give you a quick rundown of the songs and my observations from this Analog Productions UHQR version of Steely Dan's Gaucho. The sound quality of the UHQR Analog Productions version of Steely Dan Gaucho, to be put simply, is stunning, to say the least. Now, if you recall, and I have a review that I did, and I'll put the link in my, in the comments or in the in the description below, of Steely Dan Asia UHQR, which we did just a few months ago. It was a wonderful, definitive version of that album for sure. But Steely Dan Gaucho, I'm going to predict and I'm going to think, even though there's still two remaining albums to be to, to be released on Analog Productions UHQR as part of the Steely Dan series that they're doing, which is uh, The Royal Scam and Katie Lied. They have yet to been released, but they're all earlier than Gaucho. So I'm going to predict that this is going to be the definitive best sounding not only version of this album, but I think it's going to be the best sounding album of the series. The reason I say that was because of this incredible attention to detail back in 1980, the fanaticism of Pecker and Fagan, the recording people that they had, the engineers, the mastering folks that they had initially, really was credit to why that original pressing sounded so absolutely amazing really an audiophile album right from the start. This album is nothing short, as I indicated. It, it is stunning. Let me go through quickly uh, the songs on the album and my impressions of what I heard. Uh, on side A, Babylon Sisters, Tom Scott's tenor and alto saxophone sounds absolutely fantastic. Drums are excellent with great extension. Backing vocals are superb. I'm going to be talking about the backing vocals throughout this entire album on each of these songs. And I'll describe that a little bit more as we go through these songs. The backing vocals on this album and on this mastering uh, by Bernie Grunman are simply unbelievable, in my opinion. Uh, percussion on uh, Babylon Sister is clean and very clear. Moving on to Hey 19, probably the most popular song on the album. Uh, Walter Becker's guitar is clean and well-defined, as is Fagan's piano. Percussion by Steve Gadd and Victor Feldman sound clear as a bell. And this song in particular was a defining moment between the original pressing and the new UHQR because of that percussion was so identifiable and so clean and so clear. Uh, drums, again, on this cut have exceptional definition and weight. Uh, backing vocals, as I talked about, sound simply wonderful. Moving over to side B, there's only one song on side B, and that's called Glamour Profession. This song really here has not really been one of the songs that I've always really spent a lot of time oogling and over or whatever the proper word might be there. I did, I played this song on the UHQR Glamour Profession. I played this song, I'll bet I played it a dozen times. Let me tell you, let me tell you why. 
Uh, Tom Scott's uh, arrangement of the horns is simply beautiful. Excellent detail. Here's why I think I've listened to this song so much. Backing vocals are exceptional. Pre they are presented with presence that extends the depth of the stage. If you put this song on and listen to it and listen intently to the to the backing the the backing vocals uh, on this cut, you'll know what I'm talking about. The depth of my room went from well beyond the speakers uh, due to the backing vocals and the way that they are presented on this version of the album. I've never heard this song presented this way. Piano by Rob Mouncey is just spectacular. Guitar is clean and sharp. Drums along with all instruments and vocals are exceptionally well balanced with just incredible detail. And that description really is throughout the entire album. Moving over to side C, Gaucho, Tom Scott sax at the opening and throughout is absolutely crisp and clean, as well as all the horns on this cut. Uh, once again, the backing vocals are simply stunning uh, on Gaucho. Jeff Picaro's, uh, Picaro's drums sound amazing with excellent weight and definition. Uh, overall detail is just crazy good on this cut. This is truly a great song. I never really appreciated Gaucho as much as I did listening to it on this version. Uh, Time Out of Mine on Side C as well. Drums are excellent. Depth and detail is incredible. David Sanborn's uh, alto sax is excellent. Mark Knopfler lead guitar sounds excellent with tons of detail. My Rival, uh, this is moving over to side four. Uh, Steve Gadd's drums are tight and well-defined. Fagan's organ sounds great along with the synthesizer. Backing vo vocals once again are just simply stellar. Uh, Joe Sample's electric piano sounds incredible on this. Uh, Steve Gadd's drums are just wonderful. Larry Calton's lead guitar is clean with exceptional range. This album really is, and I wrote this down in words so that I wouldn't really mess it up because I have a habit of, I have a habit of doing that. The overall sound on this UHQR by Analog Productions is flat out exceptional and stunning in its presentation. It is a perfect balance of detail, depth, with incredible soundstage and presence. This is the perfect example of what an audiophile reissue should be like. This album right here is absolutely stunning. This is a better sounding ver this is a better sounding album sonic wise than Asia. Not saying the music's better, but I'm saying this is absolutely stunning in its presentation. Hats off to Bernie Grunman and the team at Analog Productions. They have come up with it's the baseball season. They've knocked this one right out of the park. Incredible. $150, I realize, is an awful lot to pay. I'm obviously paying that because I'm going to collect the entire collection on the UHQR, which I totally totally want. My opinion, in particular, of Steely Dan Gaucho UHQR, it's worth $150. I, I didn't think I could ever say something like that, an album being worth $150. But I love Steely Dan. I love their music. I love what I hear. The quality and the sonics of this album, once again, are simply stunning. Thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, please leave comments in the comments section below. If you like what you see, and there's going to be a whole lot more coming down the road, please go ahead and subscribe. Like and subscribe. I appreciate that so very much. Thank you so much once again. Have a great day.